When studying classification, one of the most popular kingdoms to study is the animal kingdom because, of course, that's your own. And so it's one that you're most familiar with. At least you think so. But when we take a closer look at some of the organisms in there, you're going to go, uh, that was an animal? Yes, it is. So what are animals? Animal kingdoms are things that are, or animals are members of the kingdom that are multicellular. And our cells have centrioles that we use during uh, cell division but we don't have cell walls or chloroplasts like the plants and algae do. We are heterotrophs. What does that mean? Well, hetero is a root word that means uh, other, and troph means uh, nutrition. So we get our nutrition from other sources. We don't make our own food. That's what plants are for. We hunt them down and kill them, or we hunt down and kill the things that ate the plants, like cows and rabbits and chickens and things. Now, we are different from a lot of the other kingdoms in that we have nerves, nerves and muscles so that we can respond extremely quickly. If you walk up to a tree and you poke it, it's not going to respond. You poke it again, it's not going to respond. Now, if you sat there for years and years and kept poking, it'll start developing thicker bark and other things like that, but it's going to be bored and just not do much in response to what you're doing. On the other hand, if you walk up to a tiger and poke it, it will quickly respond and you'll discover this is called high irritability. Now, another thing that separates us from some of the uh, organisms that are considered parts of the protozoa are that we're diploid and we have what's called the gametic life cycle. That means that our entire life we're diploid except for our gametes, which are haploid, uh, which means they have only one copy of every chromosome. Now, let me take a quick look at this phylogenetic tree and show you some of the diversity that's within the animal kingdom. Now, the animal kingdom all ultimately derive from the protozoa, a member of the uh, protus kingdom or protus group. Now, branched off very quickly from them are the sponges, the periphera, and many people consider them not really a member of the true animal or true metazoa kingdom. The Cnidaria are another major group, one of the most primitive uh, animal groups out there. They're the jellyfish. They have stinging cells and they just sit there and they float around like you've seen in Finding Nemo. Or there's the sea anemone form that's more uh, sessil. That means it doesn't move around much. And that's what Nemo's dad lived in. Then we branch off. This branch over here leads to the Echinodermata, which is a big name for the starfish that you're familiar with as well as the chordata. That's things like us and frogs and birds and fish that have a backbone, a, a nerve cord that runs up our back. This branch over here includes things like the platyhelminthes, a really big name for a really small creature. It's the flatworms. Things like tapeworms or planaria, those are platyhelminthes. Then there's the rotifers, which are these weird little things with rotating uh, mouth parts and the nematodes, which are uh, roundworms that you can find in the soil or occasionally inside of other animals as parasites. Mollusks are a broad group that includes things like clams, snails, and octopi. Up here are the annelids. Those are the earthworms, the segmented worms. And then there's the arthropods, the uh, jointed leg things. Those include bugs and spiders and shrimp and crustaceans like crabs. So that gives you an idea of the diversity of things that are within the animal kingdom.